Hello everyone, it's me Jamie and welcome to my August wrap up. This year is going by so fast, it's literally insane to me. I cannot believe how fast the year is going. But yeah, welcome to my August wrap up. How crazy, how crazy is this? I read 17 books in August, which is just insane to me. I have never read that many in one month. That's just insane. Honestly, I think lockdown has everything to do with it. But yeah, let's not talk for too long about it. Let's just get straight into it because I feel like this is gonna be a long video. So I hope you have a snack, a drink, whatever the hell is your fancy. And let's just get straight into all the books I read in August. So the first book I read in August was Tomi by Junji Ito. This is a horror manga that Chloe actually recommended to me. She put it on my August TBR and it was the first book I read. This was 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely adored this manga. I thought Tomi was such a great character. Honestly, Junji Ito's uh, art style for this book, like, it was just so exciting. And because Tomi took Junji Ito so long to write and create and illustrate, it took him several years to create finally create this work. You can really see his art style uh, improving and progressing over the years and over the different chapters, which I just found to be so exciting. I love books about like evil women, like evil women whose actions are justified. That's like my favorite genre. That genuinely is my favorite genre. So I was always going to love this book. Like going into it, I was like, I would be very, very, very surprised if I didn't like this. And I wasn't surprised at all. I loved it so much. Five out of five stars. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing place to start if you are getting into Junji Ito because I had actually never read any of his works before and this was the first manga I've read by him. And I adored it. And I would absolutely 100% go back and read it all over again. I think the next Junji Ito I'm interested in reading is probably Gyo, which I think is the horror manga about the fish. If Gyo is not the horror manga about the fish, the next Junji Ito book I want to read is the one about the fish because I love sea creatures. <laughs> I do. So I want to read about a horrific fish. That just sounds very much up my alley. But yeah, Love this book, such an amazing way to start August and definitely recommend it to a lot of people. The next book I read in August was The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. I actually was so lucky to read this because I read it basically in the space of one day. I picked it up because Chloe got it in her book of the month box and this was one of my most anticipated books of the year and it arrived like three days before I was leaving Australia and I was like, you know what, I'm throwing caution to the wind. I'm reading this while I still have the chance to do so. I think I actually pre-ordered this book anyway, so I knew I would have it when I go back to New Zealand eventually. It hasn't arrived yet, but you know, I'm sure it will arrive soon. But I was just like, you know what, I have a chance to read this book before its release date and I'm going to take that opportunity. And I wasn't disappointed. So this book is the third installment in the Kiss Quotient series by Helen Huang, which is a romance series. They are just like a series of rom-coms. I absolutely love them. And this was four out of five stars. I genuinely really liked it, but I think it just didn't measure up to The Bride Test, which is the second book in the Kiss Quotient series. But I still love this a lot. What I loved so much about The Heart Principle is the characters. First First of all, we're following Quan, who is one of the side characters in The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test, and he is 100% my favourite side character. So when I knew that we were getting a book that focused on him, I was over the moon because I just know, like reading Kiss Quotient and Bride Test, I just knew he was sexy. I just knew he was hot, and I was not wrong. He is so beautiful, loving, caring. I absolutely love him. What I loved so much about this character as well is that I I almost quite, I relate to Quan quite a bit. Quan's brother is autistic. Like the main character in The Bride Test and Quan's brother is autistic. And so Quan has learnt to be very open-minded about people with disabilities because, you know, he's grown up looking up to his brother and caring for him and learning about his disability and all that sort of stuff. And I really relate to Quan because I have grown up with a younger sibling who is disabled. Not autism, but like, I'm not going to go into it because I don't really feel like I have to. I grew up looking after a, a sis younger sister with disabilities, so I really kind of understood where like a lot of Quan's kind of compassion came from because it's just natural that if you're in a situation where you're looking after someone who is like underprivileged compared to you if you're like very like able-bodied and stuff 
I just I just understood it and I related to Quan a lot and I just really really loved him and I also loved our other main character her name was Anna and I just loved watching her journey she was just like everything about her was so interesting like her family dynamic was interesting and her career path was interesting she was a musician and I really just like I also just really love reading about people whose jobs are in the arts because same and same with like the majority of my family so I just love this book and I love their interactions the reason why it was four stars instead of five is just because I wanted a bit more of the romance and I know that's kind of bizarre coming from me because what I always say is I like my romance novels to have more going for it and more plot than just the romantic relationship and I feel like the Heart Prince will definitely have that, but I think it almost had a little bit too much. I would say maybe like um, in between the second and third act, like that's when it got a little bit more like less romantic and I just wanted more of the romance, like that's all. And I just feel like things like The Bride Test um, and other books I've read have a really happy medium of the two, whereas this had a bit too much like, life stuff. Um, I just wanted to see more of Quan and Anna together. And that's all really. Apart from that, I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend this whole series, especially the second book in the series. But yeah, loved this and thank you Chloe for letting me read your early copy. The next book I read in August was The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This was also on my August TBR pick by Chloe. This is like a YA contemporary and it's all told in verse and poetry and I loved that. I actually read this entirely in one sitting. I read it on the plane. It took me like two to three hours to finish this book and read it in its entirety. I read it on the plane on my way back to New Zealand and I really really liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. There's really nothing wrong with the novel. It was just one of those ones where it's like it just didn't have like the five star feel for me but I have nothing bad to say about it. I feel like the five star feel is just so personal and so subjective and just honestly entirely based on vibes that's like literally it. i can't explain it i am an unprofessional i this is no there, there's no scientific reasoning to this it's vibes it's just vibes so yeah i still really love this though it was so beautifully written and i loved watching our main character become the black flamingo so to speak this had a lot of stuff that i love in it as well obviously like coming to terms with your sexuality i always resonate with books like that like i've never really had to come to terms with my sexuality because i've kind of always known but the empathy that i have for fellow queer people and people in the lgbt community i just like it resonates with me and I love reading about them and I love reading queer stories so this was just amazing. Also I'm a big fan of the art of drag and this featured a lot of drag content and I just loved it so much. This is a really really good book. I honestly have nothing bad to say about it. The writing style is stunning, the characters are stunning, like so gorgeous. The next book I read in August was All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. This is a YA like fantasy horror novel almost. So this was actually gifted to me by HarperCollins New Zealand. They gifted me a physical copy and yeah so thank you HarperCollins. Thank you for that. But I read this when I was in my quarantine hotel. I read some of it when I was in Australia and some of it when I was in my quarantine hotel and I rated it three out of five stars. I thought it was super fun but not like groundbreaking and ultimately a little bit forgettable but still like a really fun read. This book features a lot of things that I'm really interested in and a lot of things that I love. First of all one of our characters comes out as non-binary in the book and obviously like I just said earlier like you know I love reading books that feature people from the LGBT community because representation. I personally can't be represented by a non-binary character but I still just like love reading about more LGBT representation. On top of that there's also the like main plot of this book is about tarot cards and our main character finding a set of tarot cards and I am obsessed with like all things tarot and kind of all things kind of like new age and mysticism and spirituality like I've been very interested in that since for like several years now that's always been something that like I gravitate towards so when I watch movies about like that sort of stuff and when it's featured in media it's definitely something that I'm really I'm really drawn to I really love it's really weird it's like two ends of the spectrum I love like new age and spirituality and all that sort of stuff but then I'm also really interested in like theology actually you know what I feel like they go hand in hand I don't know let me know if you have any other like favorite like forms of media that feature this sort of stuff because I'm always looking for more so let me know but sorry I'll get back to um, talking about this I think just the reason that this was three stars for me is just that like there were times where I felt a little bit bored most of the time it was really interesting and really fun and like a good time but just not something that I'm ever going to like 
take with me to the grave like i will probably forget about this within the space of a month but still just like a really fun read to like pass the time and that's genuinely just what i needed in my quarantine hotel so i did really really enjoy this the next book i read in august is a dowry of blood by st gibson this was a four out of five star read for me i did really really enjoy it but i wasn't really in the best headspace when reading it which is why it isn't a five star like how my friends rated it but i can still see how good it was this is also so exciting it's a retelling of dracula but from the perspective of one of dracula's wives i genuinely thought that the writing in this was so beautiful the prose was stunning it's also told in second person which is a writing device that i really like i think it's a really interesting way to tell a story and i thought it really really worked in this book this also features a super toxic and emotionally abusive relationship I mean obviously it's Dracula he like kills people whatever but that's besides the point like it's super possessive and controlling and gross and I thought this was really representative of those sorts of relationships and really really powerful to be honest one of the things that really struck me was the dedication which is to those who escaped a love like death and to those still caught in its grasp you are the heroes of this story like hello that's just beautiful and that kind of tells you all you need to know about this novel like I just genuinely really liked it I think one of the main reasons I couldn't give it five though is just because this is very personal to me but this is also like polyamorous because Dracula had like multiple spouses and while I loved the like bisexual representation polyamory is just something that I can't resonate with I just don't think like open relationships polyamory whatever I'm a monogamous girl through and through so I just couldn't really get behind it so when there's scenes of like our main character watching her husband like having sex with another woman and then like joining in like that's not really my cup of tea like I, like if I saw my the love of my life having sex with someone else like I would be torn in two so it was just like descriptions of scenes like that I just kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies and that's not me saying that polyamory is bad I respect everyone's like romantic choices and everyone's like if that's your relationship if that's what works for you good on you but it just like kind of pulls at my heartstrings a little bit maybe it's because I have trust issues you know it's just not for me it's just not for me isn't it is it it's really not because that's such a main theme of the book obviously like good on the author like it's still a really beautiful novel and I do kind of have to excuse my own personal biases and stuff but it's just never gonna be a five-star read because it just doesn't contain because it, it contains content that I personally don't enjoy and that's absolutely fine I still think this is an amazing book amazingly written and I genuinely really really recommend it it's just like all personal stuff like I can't really explain it beyond that like it's genuinely all personal stuff but yeah four out of five stars can't wait to see what else this author writes the next book I read in August was Anna Kay by Jenny Lee this was four out of five stars such a fun little read which I read in less than 24 hours this is an Anna Karenina retelling and it genuinely made me want to read Anna Karenina like I genuinely was like okay cool that's my next read this was just so so fun and dramatic and the way it was told was so interesting like for me I haven't really read another YA contemporary liked this like I almost felt like Jenny Lee was trying to emulate the style that people like Leo to Tolstoy or Jane Austen or any of those like classical writers like any of the like famous writers who wrote the classics that we all know and love I feel like our author was trying to emulate that style and I genuinely really loved it in this like Upper East Side like modern teenage high school setting genuinely it was so good I don't know I think with this book it's like this was a book where it's basically just like all high school drama but I loved it like I genuinely loved it so much it was such a nice little escapism moment and I just really recommend it like just the epitome of a fun time I loved all our characters I thought they were all really well fleshed out obviously it's like because it's a retelling the characters kind of already have been created by Leo Tolstoy but I feel like our author did such a good job at bringing them to life in a modern setting and it was just so well done there wasn't a single character that I like didn't care for except for maybe the people we weren't supposed 
supposed to, but like everyone else, like all these side characters, like our character Steven, who literally cheats on his girlfriend in the first page, his redemption arc throughout the book, like I just loved it. Such a good fast read, genuinely really recommend it, and yeah, love it. Also, I just want to apologize, I'm sorry, I know I'm going through these books really, really fast, but you know, there's 17 of them, and if you want like in depth, reviews and thoughts and then comment down below i just want to put that out there now but yeah so the next book i read in august was rival by penelope douglas this was shockingly bad i'm sorry to say it was really bad so this is the second book in the fall away series by miss penelope and this and the first book in that series is bully which i quite liked like it was fine like it was fun whatever so Rival follows the best friend of our male main character in Bully and his stepsister. So it's step sibling romance. And it's just not for me. It just wasn't for me. One star. It was a one star read, to like to be completely honest. I feel like with this one is that our characters had a lot of history from like prior to the book starting. Like there's a lot of backstory between them, a lot of history. And I just prefer a bit of a meet cute. I do. Like, I didn't really care about them, and I didn't care about what they've been through, to be completely honest. Also, the characters were just, like, not super likable. Like, I really didn't care for them. Like, our, that, honestly, our characters were, like, really cringe. Yeah, and I know they had, like, family issues and stuff, and, like, they had a lot that, like, happened in their lives that wasn't great. Like, they had a bit of trauma. But, like, cool. Like, I just didn't care for, like, the, for the book. Like, obviously, the issues that they had, the trauma they have, like, that sucks and I care about like people who have gone through that shit but in this particular case like I just didn't feel like Penelope did a good job at making us fall in love with these characters and normally Penelope is really good at making unlikable characters likable. It was just messy, the structure and the plot was all over the place and I just didn't like it. It was boring to be honest, really boring and to be honest I genuinely think I'm just like a bit over sex scenes, a bit over smart. I think I've overdone the romance genre a little bit because I was like cool they're having sex again. Like cool I'm not interested. It could also be the fact that like there was too much sex in this book. I know it's Penelope, I know it's Penelope Douglas but I just felt like there was too many sex scenes like just literally give me and the girl and the boy a break please like I, do I just don't want to read about it anymore like enough sex. Yeah anyway one star never want to talk about this ever again in my life. Moving on. So after Rival I read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I read this in a 24 hour like readathon vlog and this was also on my August TBR as chose my Chloe and I I loved this. I genuinely did. I didn't even think I would. I thought it would be like three stars maybe but this was four stars. I genuinely really liked it. I think with this one is that just like it was just so fun. It was like everything I needed. It was short. It was concise. I haven't had the best experience with Holly Black in the past so reading this I don't know I was just really pleasantly surprised. I will say I don't get the hype with Cardin just yet. Like he's not really the one that does it for me. He's not really the character I care about. Like I don't really have a crush on him, but Jude is an absolute girl boss and I adored her. I just loved where this story went. I also love that like our characters, I, I'm trying not to give spoilers. I guess I just, I just love that there's so much more for the relationship to develop. Like there's such a long way for Jude and Cardin to go in this first book, which I just think is great. Like I kind of don't really love when like in a series our like couple kind of gets together within the first book so then like whatever it's kind of boring so I just loved that like we've just got a long way to go with them and I loved that and I loved all of their development there were a few plot twists that I 100% like guessed right off the bat but that's fine with me to be honest like I'm a genius I, I, I don't blame I don't blame Holly Black like she'll create an amazing story I can't help that I'm really clever so yeah I don't know I just really liked it writing style was fun it was a good time. The ending, like exactly, that was beautiful. Did see it coming from a mile off, but still I wouldn't have done it any other way. So I really, really love this and I can't wait to read The Wicked King, which I'm hoping to read this month in September, but we'll see. Really, really, really liked it. Such a good time, four stars. Okay, so the next book I'm gonna talk about, I just know that I'm gonna disappoint people and I'm really sorry, I genuinely do apologize for this. But the next book that I attempted to read in August was Jade City by Fonda Lee. I attempted to read this twice and I got to the same spot each time and just put it down. So I actually did DNF this. I could not continue. There's not really, I don't think anything wrong with the novel. It's just not to my tastes and that's fine. It's a completely subjective opinion. I just feel like for me, 
with my fantasies. I just didn't vibe with the writing style. I really, I really didn't. It didn't, it wasn't very exciting to me. That's all. Like, that's all. And also, like, I said in a vlog recently that, like, I just... I just didn't like that there were so many male characters and no women and people were commenting saying like oh no like there's a stunning girl boss that comes soon like keep going but just for me like I would rather the girl boss be there from page one and there's so many books out there where I don't have to wait till like 150 pages to get to the girl boss so I genuinely think I don't know if I can continue with this uh, that might change in the future but yeah I just didn't think this book was for me I also am just not a fan of like mafia sort of storylines and that's kind of what this book is and there's not really any changing my mind about that so because it's just something that I know that I don't really enjoy like I watched The Godfather I hated it like there's just a lot of mafia stuff that that I've consumed a lot of mafia media and it's not for me so yeah I did unfortunately DNF this twice I'm sorry guys I'm sorry Jade City fans don't hate me the next book I read in August was The Project by Courtney Summers I gave this three out of five stars I genuinely really liked it I know this has had a lot of mixed reviews but I honestly thought it was a pretty good time uh, it had like one of my favorite kind of tropes and that is like sinister religious cults honestly a trope and subject matter that I love so I had a good time with this I just feel like it was three out of five stars for me though because there were a little few there were a few moments that I just felt like dragged on a little bit and were a little bit boring and there was one like kind of main character in the book that I felt was slightly underdeveloped but and it was disappointing because he could have been the most exciting character for me but I still really really enjoyed the book like I really did and Courtney Summers she just never misses she really doesn't she just never misses and I do need to stress as well like three stars is not a bad rating for me like sometimes I will rate something three stars and on Twitter people will be like oh my god tea but it's really not tea it's still a good book to me if it was one star like that's tea if it was two stars that's a bit of tea but three stars is not tea like this was a good book and I really liked it it was just three stars Courtney Summers just creates such amazing stories and such engaging characters and has such an engaging writing style so I can't wait to read more by this author this was just really fun I really liked it I loved the journey our main character went on and I love reading books that have like dual timelines and dual perspectives and this had just so many tropes that I love so I did enjoy it it's just three stars for the reasons that I mentioned before before and that's fine oh my god I still have eight books to talk about I feel like I've been talking for years but let's just hurry up cool the next book I read in August was Love Scammed by Rilsey Adams this is a romance novella this was another three out of five star read for me I thought the characters were amazing I genuinely really liked this book I thought it was really good but I'm just never gonna rate a romance novella higher than three stars because I'd read two novellas actually this month and the reason I love romance so much is because we get to follow our characters we see watch them develop we get to know them and then we see them come together and fall in love and that's beautiful but I feel like with novellas we don't have a lot of time to get to know them so it's never going to be more than three stars for me because that's just not what I like about the romance like in romance novels what I like is not the sex scenes it isn't you know the characters like coming together whatever it's getting to know them individually and then watching them come together and I feel like Love Scams tried to do this in its 141 pages and it did do it quite well. But I feel like, you know, our couple ca came together and then had sex for the last 60 pages. So that's 80 pages of them getting to know each other and then 60 pages of smart. That's nearly half the book. So while I really loved it and I loved our characters and I will definitely be reading more by this author especially if she has any full-length novels because I loved their banter I loved everything I just don't want to read like 70 pages of or have many pages of um of sex that's just me each to their own but that's just me but yeah I still recommend this as a novella and like a good place to start if you want to like read a romance but you don't want to like go into a full novel you don't want to spend too much time on it then I definitely still recommend this but yeah I'm glad I read it. It was nice to pass the time in quarantine. But yeah, 3 out of 5 stars. After that, I read Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashadust. This is a YA fantasy, which I really had a good time with. This was another 3 out of 5 star read. I thought it was really, really cool, and the concept was amazing. So basically, our main character, she's this girl, she's this princess, who has been cursed, and she is poisonous to the touch. So anyone who touches her dies. And our character kind of like hates it about herself. She wants to be a normal girl. Loved this concept. This was such a good time and I loved our character's journey. I just feel like towards the end it got a little bit boring and I was a little bit done with it. But that's the only reason it's 3 out of 5 stars. I think I kind of experienced a bit of burnout in August because I was reading so much. Because I had to. I didn't really have anything else to do. But 
yeah. Oh yeah, there was a sapphic romance, which I absolutely loved. Sorry, can you tell that I'm like kind of done with filming this video? <laughs> we carry on. We soldier on. We soldier on. Yeah, no, good time. Good time. Really liked it. Basically, this is a standalone fantasy as well, and I think there needs to be more standalone fantasies in the world. This was really fun, and I love that I don't have to like fully prepare myself to start like a five book series. So also, this was only like 310 pages. What a good time. Love these characters. Please recommend standalone fantasies down below and maybe I can explain them better in my next wrap up. The next book I read in August was The Astonishing Colour of After by Emily XR Pan. This was four out of five stars for me. I thought the writing was so beautiful. The only reason it's not five is because I wanted to cry. Because basically this book deals with suicide, loss of a loved one, like all that stuff. And I loved watching our main character kind of go through that and then having that be the catalyst to go back to her home country which is Taiwan and meet her family that she had never met before like meet her grandparents that she'd never met before and learn more about herself and her heritage through this incident I thought it was such a good time I just wanted it to be a little bit more like emotionally draining for me a little bit more hard-hitting but that's still fine like the writing was just so beautiful I had such a good time short chapters short chapters is always a green flag in my book yeah I just really really recommend this I thought it was really good and I loved it and I you know what guys I'm just gonna say this now I most of these books I talk about I have vlogged so if you want to hear like proper thoughts and not me just kind of racing through them so this video is under an hour long go check out those vlogs all my vlogs from August but yeah love this book kind of just wish I cried the next book I read in August was an absolute new favorite of mine and that is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This was 145 pages of pure excellence. I loved this five out of five stars. The writing style in this was beautiful. Again another second person novel that I read in August. Loved that writing style. I have told you before like loved that. What our character went through was so hard hitting and I genuinely loved it. It's not necessarily like a book I can relate to because obviously it is about our main character being black in England in London and the I guess lack of freedom that he feels living in a majority like white country and society but I still just like I just love this book so much it had so much heart so many stunning sentences and quotes and it was just so clear that our author was just really putting so much of his own soul and heart into this book he referenced so much media that it's quite clear that this author has like is obviously just talking about and mentioning the things that he loves and I really loved how personal that felt I genuinely loved this book so much this is such an amazing novel and honestly it's only 145 pages so if you have the time please read it like the love story in here was gorgeous as well and very realistic but mostly I just loved our character's journey and learning more about him and the writing and everything it was just beautiful so if you have like a couple of hours spare pick up this 145 page book and read it because it's just beautiful and I love it and it's like a new favorite the next book I read in August was The Chase by Al Kennedy this is the first book in the Briar U series so it's a new adult college romance and I rated this two out of five stars it was fine it was fun and like addicting to read when I was reading it but my god that most basic white girl power feminism I've ever read. I'm sorry, but I just never want to like read another like girl power sentence ever again. Like I'm, I'm a bit beyond that. Like I am a feminist. I believe in equality for all genders, but I don't want to read girl power sentences. It lacks so much nuance and I'm not like, I'm not talking shit on people who have like just kind of gone in, into feminism and can't have these like big discussions or anything. Like, I, I don't know. It was just like, it was just like, oh, Kennedy, I really don't want to read like your really basic like Pinterest quotes about feminism. That's not why I'm reading this book. It really isn't. I don't know. I explained this so much better in my vlog where I read this book, but yeah. I also think with this particular novel, our male lead was just really not it. Like he was really boring and grumpy and like girls are so obnoxious. Like okay cool like move on. I don't know just not a fan of him really not and my camera battery is flashing and I've been filming for over an hour so let's move straight on to the next book after the chase I read the dead Queens Club by Hannah Capen this was a two-star read 
Uh, it was a retelling of like Henry VIII or whatever and his wives. This was really convoluted for a high school like novel. There was not enough substance, not enough plot. It was all just like witty banter and jokes, which usually I love a bit of witty banter and jokes, but this had too much of that and not enough of like character development and like actual plot. And our main character was like, I'm not like other girls. I'm really cool and different. And I'm not like any of the girls that my guy best friend has dated. And that's what makes me better than them. So I did not like this. Two out of five stars. Sorry, Hannah Capen. I loved Fowler's Fair, but this book was not it. Now let's move on. The next book I read was Guarding Temptation by Talia Hibbert. Another three star novella. This one was a little bit worse than Love Scammed which is the romance novella that I mentioned earlier on in the video and purely because of all the reasons that I said before. But this book actually started like right after a sexual encounter between our two main characters. Like that's genuinely when the book started. So I felt like I was picking up a book and jumping straight into the middle of it without having like read the beginning and that was disappointing to me. But however I still think Talia Hibbert is really really a really good writer, really talented and I love her characters and will still be reading more by her but I probably just won't pick up like any romance novellas in the future because they're just not for me. Three stars. Still really liked it but that's my reasoning. Sorry guys my camera battery is flashing. I feel like I'm on two times speed now but in real life. Okay. Oh my god where's the last book? Okay so the last book I read in August was The Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness. I can't explain much about this book to you without like spoiling it. Um, five out of five stars. Trigger warnings for animal uh, abuse and rape culture, murder, violence, all that stuff, but this is a girl boss book. In fact, I have it here. Let me just hold it up here. Loved it so much. If you saw my most recent vlog, you will know that I sobbed my eyes out. This was amazing. This was touching. I genuinely loved it so much. Five out of five stars. Our three main characters, love them, would die for them. Cool. Five out of five stars. So thank you so much for watching this really poorly done wrap up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry that I am on like X games mode now. Extreme level uh but it's just because i do, <laughs> i don't want to have to keep filming this because my camera battery is flashing but i'm so sorry i think if i ever read more than 10 books in a month ever again i will probably be doing like a mid-month wrap-up rather than like a full wrap-up where i try and talk about like nearly 20 books in one go because it's just not working out yeah i'm sorry for this really shocking video i'm sorry about the crumbs i'm giving you instead of like actual quality like full three course meal i'm so sorry but yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your favorite book that you read in August. A reminder that all my socials are linked down below. I love you all so much. I'm sorry this video sucks and I'll see you very soon in another one, which I promise will be better. Love you so much. Bye. But she said, Cindy, don't cry.